Hello and welcome to The Silver Lining, the weekly geekly talk show where we discuss any number of topics that may have come up during the week. I'm your host, Uncle Silver, a.k.a. Silver Greg, a.k.a. Greg, whatever you are comfortable calling me. And welcome to you, my co-host, The Chat. Always a terrific, terrific time having everybody here uh, to discuss whatever whatever happenings in our geeky world uh, may have come up during the week. We had a few. We actually had a couple of different things. Uh, uh, some Some okay, some not so okay. Uh, I won't be talking about the the uh, b- the billion dollar company versus the billion dollar company because, uh, quite frankly, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> like, I I know that I know that we make it our practice here to uh, and and in, in a lot of geeky places to to discuss and to care about things that other people might say. Well, why that's not really that important. But uh, the the whole thing with um, with Epic Games and uh, uh, what is it, the Apple Store, and then I think like the Microsoft Store. I I I, I honestly don't care. Like like they're oh well, they took it off of here and it, 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 I don't care. I think the funniest thing about it to happen, yeah, Apple and Google, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I think the funniest thing to come out of it was Epic Games. They did a I don't know how the hell they slapped this together so quick. Uh, they did like a Fortnite video where they're like talking trash about the company i think that's funny other than that i don't care yeah three billion dollar companies having a pissing match and and over money would none of them need and you know it's funny ryan it it makes me laugh because epic games wasn't a billion dollar company until what a year and a half two years ago with fortnite like they were nothing nobody gave a crap and then fortnite happened which undeniably was you know it, it was and kind of still is a, a juggernaut in that realm not as much as it used to be but like i i just i don't care i can't care enough yeah that 1984 uh now i find the i find the 1984 advertising because epic is just as much. Yeah, yeah right no 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 it, it's it's still stupid of them right it's it's still absolutely ridiculous of them to to have the nerve to 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 reference someone else as 1984 but you I, I just i just think that it's funny i thought that it's i thought that it was funny that they whipped it together so fast uh <laughs> uh but hello ryan gorilla somber the wario uh the high wario uh kia kia uh, uh latimer mr l jerf what's going on uh yeah fortnite to fortnite that wasn't even finished still in early access well t- 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 horrible horrible <laughs> Uh, they were ready for the bat. Yeah, I guess so. I guess. I guess. I mean, yeah, you're right. This was this was most likely going on behind the scenes for a little while, and then we only just found out about it now. <clears throat> but like, as far as as far as choosing sides, it's very much Alien versus Predator. Uh, I think it was Alien versus Predator that had the tagline "Whoever wins, we lose." And I'm sure we've seen it in a lot of other places. We're gonna see it in the election this year. Uh, you know, it, 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 that's sort of what it is. Like. <clears throat> and it's not even like whoever wins we lose it's whoever wins we don't care like if if they go to court and apple wins or fortnite wins does anybody here really care will anybody here be impacted like even if you play fortnite even if you play fortnite and or even if you have apple store or or google like it even if you were somehow t- t- uh, slightly involved, none of this matters to you. <laughs> <clears throat> Is better when a clip of Greg uh, say many. Uh, uh, Greg and Elliot are the few who get it right. Uh, Lat- what, Latimer, really? Nobody gets that right. Uh, and and not even just any. I mean, you're not even just any Latimer. You're the Latimer. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I also find it incredible, uh, disturbing, and incredibly tone deaf. Uh, free Fortnite is if, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the I saw that tag earlier today, uh, and it was Jeff Keeley, I think, that tweeted that out, and that's ridiculous. The free Fortnite, the, Fortnite's fine. Fortnite, Fortnite's gonna be a okay. <laughs> Trust me, Epic Games is fine. They're not, they're not gonna end up on the streets. Hey, flip note. I thought you said you weren't gonna be here. You lied. It's also the tag of the upcoming election. <laughs> <laughs> um talking about that well no no uh dragoon i was just gonna say that i wasn't 
it's like a chunk of my microphone thing taken out. Uh, I was just going to say, ironically, here we are talking about it, and it started because I said that we weren't going to talk about it. Uh, we won't go in depth into it. I'm, I'm not going to, because I was going to go in and, and look at the specifics of what happened, and I've real like, I went to go and type into the search the specifics of, like, trying to find the specifics of what had happened, and I realized I don't care. Like, I honestly don't care. As somebody who played Fortnite before, I really don't care. Uh, anybody who plays Fortnite right now probably doesn't care. It's just so irrelevant. It's just so it's so ridiculous. I, I, it's it's strange. And we talk about nonsense here all the time. I, I can ramble on for hours about nonsense, and I think this is stupid. So <laughs> that's got to tell you something. Uh, her companies are worried about saying uh, anything about Epic. Otherwise, they may not allow access to the Unreal Engine to credit. Fine, come up with another engine. How about that? How about that? Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, hello, hi. Uh, uh hopefully everybody is doing okay. Uh, besides, I I know, I know, I know. We're we're all very distraught over Apple versus Epic versus Google or whoever the hell, whatever sides they're on. I know everybody's distraught, but despite that. I hope everybody has had an okay week. Uh, my week has been okay. My week actually hasn't been too bad. I, I my my job is still out uh, of air conditioner. Uh, the air conditioner is still broken. I did get word that I was going to be allowed to leave early from now on until the air conditioner is fixed. But I'm going to be honest with you, uh, the air like it's 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 been cooler lately. Uh, like Wednesday was terrible. I was I it, Wednesday was so hot at work. I started to feel a little sick. So I called to find out. Uh, if I could leave early and it turns out that the supervisor had asked the boss if I could leave early pretty much every day Which I didn't ask for I just I just needed to go home then so she's like yeah Yeah, you'll be able to leave early as long as the air conditioner is broken So I'm like, you know what? That's great, but uh, I'll be honest next week uh, I'll probably just stay until the end of the shift. It's been cooler I, I don't know how it's been where you guys live, but uh, it's it was really really hot here and it has gotten cooler I think it's gonna be like low 80s for the next week at least uh, it's still hot there. Yeah, it's it's like low 80s here, like 82 or something. I think it's going to be like mid 70s one day uh, next week. So that that's good here. That's that's really good. You know, when it's been 90 and 95 and humid the whole time, high 70s, low 80s, we're uh, we're okay. Uh, so yeah. So other than that, um, it's been you know it, it's been just sort of just sort of mellow. I'm just trying to, uh, I don't know, just trying to settle down. I I, I um. For anybody that doesn't know, I uh, I take CBD gummies, uh, which I'll, I'll let you look that up. Uh, that that's sort of a weird explanation of what that is, but uh, I I use them for my anxiety. They're they're totally illegal. It's not illegal drugs or anything, uh, but I use them to help me sleep. And I ran out uh, this week. I I took my last ones, so I went to go buy more, and they didn't have the same ones. They had different ones that were uh, a little bit bigger. The the other ones were like gummy bears. Uh, so I would take two gummy bears. And it's, yeah, they're not, they're not weed gummies, <laughs> but, um, uh, I would take two gummy bears and then about an hour later, I'd be really tired and it was time to go to sleep. I took them because my anxiety was starting to keep me up at night, which is not really, I mean, you know, I don't like it anyway. Uh, like I, I don't want to be up because I have anxiety, but during the week I need to be asleep at a regular time because I wake up so early for work. So I, I ran out of the gummy. So I started doing the gummies and the, and the gummies work very well. So I ran out. So I went to go get new ones and the ones that they had are like these bananas. So they're like this big, which I love banana flavor candy. I, I, I runts. If anybody knows what runts are, the banana ones, people used to hate them. I used to tell them, pass them my way. I love those. Uh, the, the, you know what the rocket pops are? It's like the red, white, and blue. They make a different one. That's like a, a chocolate banana chocolate. Fantastic, fantastic. Banana flavor ice cream, terrific. Banana candy, love it. Absolutely love it. Ironically, I don't like bananas. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, I'm not a huge fan of bananas, but banana flavored things, uh, terrific. Banana milk, like uh, like you have chocolate milk and strawberry milk, there's banana milk. Banana milk's unbelievable, fantastic. So I got them, and it turns out that because they're bigger, uh, they're, they're, the dosage is more, uh, Hey, Mr. Sonic, uh, the dosage is more in each gummy than two of the gummy bears were. So I have to eat a whole gummy. 
half an hour, half an hour later, I was ready to pass out. They're awesome. <laughs> so if you are having some trouble uh, getting to sleep, uh, but my recommendation, if you are able to do so, is CBD gummies. They are as uh, do some research on them so you feel more comfortable about them. But I can tell you right now, for me, they work terrifically. I love it. Uh, so yeah, other than that, just you know, just sort of mellowed out, and, and I don't know. I, I I've, I've been kind of mellow this week. I've been really like other than the gummies. Uh, I've been pretty mellow this week. Uh, do you find the sound of your own heart? Beating starts to keep you up. No, no, nothing like that. Just, just, uh, just thoughts. My, my mind runs wild and I come up with a bunch of scenarios. I am one of those people that if something seems off before I have a chance to stop myself, I'll come up with 10 different scenarios that are all negative about what's going on. Uh, you know, I go outside and, and my car won't start give me 10 seconds and I'll be able to tell you why everything broke. I'll be able to tell you about every bump I hit in the last few days and why that probably broke it. I'll have two at least two scenarios in my head about why the neighbors hate me and why they sabotage my car on purpose. Like nothing I'll follow up with nothing. I won't knock on my neighbor's door. Like, did you do this? Like, I won't be anything like that, but my, I, I have a very active imagination. And uh, when you have, uh, and I, I know somebody out there is going to is going to be able to relate to this when you have anxiety plus a very active imagination. It is a recipe for disaster. It really kind of is a recipe for disaster. Hold on. Let me mute my phone here because oh, no, my phone's being good. What's this about your car? <laughs> Uh, don't be hired. All right. So. So. OK. So, so I, I've seen people make the joke already. I don't mind the joke. The joke's really funny. Uh, Cause I thought the same thing too, um, but uh, CBD gummies. All right, so so in when you smoke when you smoke the marijuana, right? The 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 wacky tobacco, uh, the the uh, the the crazy leaf. Um, w there's two chemicals in it that are that are the strongest. This is how I've learned to explain it. This, if I'm wrong, please tell me. But this is how when I looked it up, this was the explanation that I I understood. There are two main chemicals in uh, marijuana that that do the thing, right? That that get you crazy. Uh, the one of them is THC, which is, THC is the big one. That's the real, like that's the one that makes you like, oh, dude, I can see colors. Uh, and then CBD is the other one, which is the one that makes you feel kind of tired and and very lethargic. Uh, CBD is not actually illegal. THC is illegal. That's sort of the problem with with pot. They didn't they didn't make the plant illegal. It's the chemical in the plant that makes you high is what's illegal. So CBD is actually legal. I buy my gummies at a smoke shop, which is it's totally legal. Uh, you can order them online. Like everybody, like a lot of people I know that that take them, they order them online. Uh, so it's 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 the gummy or there's oils and stuff that don't have the THC in it. So you don't get high. Like I, I take a gummy and I don't get like, whoa, what if, what if C-A-T spelled dog, man? Like, I don't get like that. It's just, I get real tired. And then a half an hour later, I'm like, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> Uh, let me jump back up here. I wonder if I should bring up CBD gummies uh, next time I talk to someone. I, I, Latimer, I, Latimer, I know people that take them not to go to sleep. They take them for anxiety. Like while they're awake, they take it throughout the, like once or twice throughout the day for their anxiety. It works. It doesn't counter, it doesn't interact with any other drugs as far as I know, which is actually true for marijuana too. It doesn't interact with really any other drugs. So it's it's probably one of the safer things that you can take out there. Uh, that's why when people talk about drug use and stuff, and and you know they they drink all they over they drink too much or whatever. I would I if I had the opportunity to recommend to them something, it's usually it's usually pot because pot is much safer than any of the other things that are out there. Pot. Being addicted to pot is safer than being addicted to food. Like, how bad is that? That's it's just so strange. Which is you know, which is a weird topic for us to get into here. I I don't mind the topic, but I know some people do, so we don't talk about it now. But 
yeah, it, it's kind of wild. I have problems, but the only thing I noticed was I saw colors a little bit differently. Uh, gummy bears, and you can wrap in paper and smoke. <laughs> smoke the gummy bears. Listen, I bought some of those CBD gummies, and, and I and I smoked them, and nothing happened. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 marijuana is is illegal. Is marijuana is the one that's illegal, and it is the one that is safest out of all of them. Um, too bad pot isn't legal. It's it's moving around. It's moving around. It's slowly but surely. It's getting more traction from state to state. There's a lot of people who are uh, starting to uh, realize that not only is it profitable because that's when it comes down to politics, that's what it is. If if they can make money off of it, that's what they want to do. But there are a lot of areas that are, that are dealing with a lot of, uh, especially opioids, uh, th that are dealing with significant opioid problems. And they're realizing that when they introduce marijuana as a, as an alternative, a lot of people would rather do that. And it's a lot safer. It, it's actually, I, I've, I've known people who were on opioids and quit them because they started smoking more pot and that was fine and it works and then they became functional people again uh it's all fun and games till you realize you're eating haribo and wonder well i uh, latimer when i got them i put them in the fridge and because i keep them in the refrigerator especially because it's really hot and i had to tell beth like listen that's not candy uh <laughs> so don't sit there my one of my biggest fears is coming home and then she's sitting there uh i find out she ate half of the container and it's like, oh my god! Okay, first of all, they were super—they were super expensive. Uh, <laughs> for gummy bears, they were super expensive. And then second off, uh, I—you probably had a really good nap. Uh, the war on drugs was just right wing Nixon wanting an easy way to lock up African Americans. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, Ryan. Uh, there was a clip. Uh, apparently, there's an audio clip of him saying that, uh, like an Oval Office clip of that being said. And I, I heard it some time ago. And I can't find it again. I uh, think it would be legal right now, but even places like France are cracking down hard. It's just, it's, it's just an excuse for them to, to, uh, because they think that the, the, this idea that it's the gateway drug is is propaganda that was developed a long time ago. Uh, the a lot of this stuff is related to propaganda from a long time. And when I say a long time ago, I mean like in the twenties and thirties. Uh, the twenties is pretty much when. Uh, marijuana illegalization started and there was there was a bunch of propaganda about it uh look it up there it's a it's i'll be honest it's a fascinating it's a fascinating subject on its own like other than just the idea that pot isn't as bad but uh when you look at the history of marijuana in the united states and and in, in many parts of the world uh and you they talk about the uh the evolution of the legislation and uh, what it what it what it was what it used to be what it's become and what it can be it's a really fascinating thing if you do it uh, you know what elements uh i'm the same way i'm the same way elements uh, uh if i am not if i'm not a smoker then please don't do it near me uh the the biggest problem with pot is that when people talk about legalization when they talk about uh recreational use they treat it like cigarettes they tr I, I remember hearing people all the time who are like, oh, they're going to make pot legal and then it's going to be like, oh, I'm going on my smoke break at work and I'm going to have a joint. Like, no, it doesn't work that way. You don't treat it like cigarettes. It's, it's like alcohol. Right now, alcohol is legal. But if you went on your break at work and had a bunch of drinks and then came back and you were drunk, you'd get fired. Even though alcohol is legal, there are there are sanctioned places where you can do it and where you can't do it. There are places where you can and can't be drunk. Public drunkenness is not allowed. No matter how legal alcohol is, being drunk in public is a crime. So, no, it's not going to be like that. And so, no, and, and that's why the, the reason I say elements, you're not going to be standing outside and there's going to be some guy next to you smoking a joint. Just like here anyway, I don't know about anywhere else. Here in the US, you can't be standing at a bus stop and then some and, and sitting there with a, with a bottle of alcohol. You you with a, with an open beer. You you really legally you're not allowed to do that. Uh yeah, those dare programs um I I learned more about drugs, about different kinds of street drugs from Cops coming to our school in grade school telling us about drugs in the D.A.R.E. program than I ever learned about anything on the streets. On the streets, I have encountered pot 
And uh, I have seen crack, like like vials of crack. I've seen them before. And that's it. That's it. it like, like, like encountered myself. Not used. Not used. Don't worry. Um, I never used crack. Encountered myself. In the D.A.R.E. programs, they literally told us told us how they do heroin, like what they do with heroin. They they had a I remember it, it's so I I have a vivid memory of it. It's so wild. I have the most vivid memory of it. They had this wooden. It looks like a wooden briefcase, right? And if you've ever seen geology samples, like rocks and stuff, you open it up and there's a little compartment with each of the different kinds of rocks. You open it up. And it was drugs. And it was, I don't know if they were real drugs or if it was just like like plastic models to look like drugs. But it was different kinds of drugs. And they were showing the different drugs. They smoke these. They do this, whatever. The heroin one, the cop actually said what they do is they boil it or they heat it up on a spoon. This is, this is the cop telling us this. That they heat it up on a spoon and then they strain it into a needle and then they inject the needle and then they inject that stuff into their body. This is what the cop told us. We were in third grade and this is what the cop told us and they were there for the D.A.R.E. program. You you, you gotta be kidding me. I apologize, by the way, because I think I just told you all how to do heroin. (laughs) Like, like, that's unbelievable. I had... Never, never even thought that that is how somebody does drugs. I've seen people smoking pot before. I had never in my life thought that that, that people like as bad as this is going to sound. And I do not want anybody to take this the wrong way. I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way. Heroin must be awesome. It really has to be. It because I don't like needles. I go and I get my blood drawn if I have to. I'll get a vaccination if I have to. That get vaccinated. Um, I, I'll do all of that stuff. And even though I do that stuff, I I'm not sitting there relishing when they stick me with a needle. I'm not sitting there with you know ready ready for my, to get my blood drawn. Like oh boy, here we go. I I don't like it. So for something to be so good that you're willing to jab yourself over and over with a needle, th- there's got to be something, right? <laughs> uh, when I was in sixth grade, the dare officers told my class uh, they had to retire the drunk glasses because it made being drunk look fun. <laughs> yeah, put a needle near me and I'll introduce you to my baseball bat. So Sondox, so imagine what it takes for people to say, oh, yeah, I'll do that voluntarily. Absolutely. It's just, it's, it's wild. And then back to, back to pot, what's happening is uh, when you have these opioids that are like that, the, you, these, these things that are, that are so significantly bad for you, a lot of areas are starting to realize, excuse me, a lot of areas are starting to realize that when you, what the, the reason that they go to some of these other drugs is not because pot is the gateway to them. It's because pot is just as illegal as them. I've heard people constantly say that I would smoke pot and instead of drinking alcohol if pot was illegal. If pot was legal. Hey, Hero Chaos. Uh, we are uh, we're we're off the rails and we haven't even started. <laughs> uh, put a needle in me now. Uh, yeah, we're just just talking about drugs and stuff. I, I was I was uh, talking about the fact that I got new. This all stemmed from me talking about the fact that I got new CBD gummies. Um, <laughs> but hello, everybody. Hello, everyone that may not uh, uh, have been here when I said hello before. Um, so, yeah. So so my week has been kind of wild. Hopefully everybody's week has been OK. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a big, giant topic that we probably shouldn't be talking about. CBD gummies, CBD gummies. But we are going to get into our first topic because uh, I one of these is pretty cool. And what did Flintstone? Oh my God, Flintstones chewable CBDs. <laughs> um, so, no, oh, I hit the I hit the topic change button. I didn't even start the topics yet. All right, so I want to get into this first topic here. Uh, this first topic is, um, I I 
I should be happy about it, and I'm kind of not. Um, and I'm gonna we're gonna go into why here. Uh, they just announced a new uh, Neo Geo. This is not actually Arcade One Up. This is a I guess this is just Neo Geo straight up. Uh, but this is an Arcade One Up style system. The there's the top half, which is the unit itself. That's the whole unit right there. Uh, it's 25 inches tall. Uh, and then over here is they're also selling a base that is another 32 inches tall. So the whole thing will be 57 inches all the way, which is not bad. That's like a three quarter size arcade cabinet. That's not too bad. Uh, it, it's 450 for the top part. Uh, it's a hundred dollars for the bottom part, but if you order them together, you get $50 off. So this is a $500 system that will come with 50 games pre-installed on it. Now, all of this sounds really good. It sounds kind of awesome, even though the price is extremely high. Uh, I love Neo Geo machines. I would love to have a real Neo Geo machine and start collecting Neo Geo arcade carts. I would absolutely love to do that. Uh, the, the problem is it's just... Yeah, you could probably spend that much on a real deal. Yeah, the last time I had an opportunity to buy a real Neo Geo machine, I missed out on it, and it was $400. It just needed a lot of work. It, need, it was not red. Like, it was just really beaten up. But it would have been really cool anyway. Uh, but so they announced this machine, and I immediately, my first thought was, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, that, I love Neo Geo machines. I would love to have something like that, even if it just looks like a Neo machine. Then I... I read a little more, and it's just kind of okay. And I saw the list of games, and I don't like the list of games. And I, I this is a problem that I've had with some of these machines, with the Neo Geo sp sp uh, specifically. Um, does it say has it? No, 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 because it comes with the monitor and everything. So as far as I know, it's all built in. Which, by the way, the monitor I have I have a list of the specs here. Um, the monitor is twelve eighty by ten twenty four. I think is what they said, which is a 5-4 aspect ratio, which is not the correct aspect ratio. No, it's an LCD. It's, a, it's an LCD, but it's a 17-inch LCD, which is actually kind of small, uh, to, to be honest. Uh, that, that is a really small. And then it is a 5-4 aspect ratio, which is not significantly different from a 4-3, but I don't know. It just it seems odd. That you would do that like why why wouldn't it just be the regular aspect ratio but they probably didn't make the monitors they probably got them dirt cheap so that's yeah that's just that's a big laptop size so already i have a bit of a problem here because that is a bit small i, I don't know how how much are the how big are the arcade one up screen sizes the average are like the uh the 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 street fighter one how big were those monitors because they were i think they were like 19 inches which is which is even bigger uh, CRTs are like illegal. Yeah, no, 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 no elements. I don't mind uh, that it's not a CRT. I, w I, I think it would be insane if it was actually a CRT. I think it would be a lot bigger if it was an actual CRT. I'm just confused that it's not a 4.3 monitor. Oh, they were 17 inches too? Okay, so that's not bad. Oh, no, 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 Sondax, the, the screen itself. The screen itself on the arcade one. So they were 17 inches too. Okay, so that's a playable... It's a playable size. It's just weird that it's 5.4 instead of 4.3, but it's not really a deal breaker. I mean, the price, if anything's a deal breaker here, it's the price tag. But uh, so then you have the games. And the games is where I have a real problem with. And that is not to say that these are bad games. I love some of these choices. But I am not everybody. And even though I love some of these choices, I admit that if I had one of these, I won't play most of these games. Be and, and I'm gonna read the list. Uh, do you have a list? I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read them out. Uh, oh, I am looking at um. Here, hold on. Uh, yeah, I remember to do that. Uh, so it's reviewgeek.com is the article. These articles are all over the place. Uh, so it, it shouldn't be hard to find one. Um, but. This is the games, and you're you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see the the problem here. King of Fighters 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. I believe uh, it's a little small there. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Metal Slug, Metal Slug two, three, four, five, X, 
Samurai Showdown. Sam Show 2, 3, 4, uh, which is the Makasa's Revenge. Uh, Samurai Showdown 5. Samurai Showdown 5 Special. Fatal Fury. Fatal Fury 2, 3, Special. Real Bout Fatal Fury. Real Bout Special. Real Bout 2, uh, the newcomers. Garo, Mark of the Wolves. World Heroes. World Heroes 2. World Heroes 2 Jet. World Heroes Perfect. Art of Fighting. Art of Fighting 2, but not Art of Fighting 3. Sengoku. Sengoku 2. Sengoku 3. Uh, what is that? Savage Savage Reach, which I don't even think I'm familiar with. Magician Lord, which is not a good game. Last Blade. Last Blade 2. Super Tag Battle. Shock Troopers. Super Sidekicks. Top Players Golf. Three Count Bout, uh, which I'm not familiar with. I, I don't know if that's a wrestling game or not. Baseball Stars and Football Frenzy. Some of these are fantastic. Some of these are King of Fighters 94 and World Heroes 1 and, uh, and games that are just mediocre. Uh, top player golf is Neo Turf. Is that Neo Turf Masters? Is that the same thing? I wasn't sure if they were two different games. My, my problem is... It's it's catering to the same audience over and over again. Over and over again. The Neo Geo Mini. The 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 Neo Geo X that came out, or it was like a like a it was like a handheld system or something like that. These keep these cater to the same thing, which is fighting game fans. Neo Geo machines had plenty of fantastic games. Why? Are these always the same things? It's nice that it has these six Metal Slug games because at least the Metal Slug games felt kind of differently. But I think most people are going to have one or two favorite Metal Slug games, and that's the ones they're going to play. Samurai Showdown, good games. Most people are going to have the ones that they really like. King of Fighters. Uh, for me, there's no point in King of Fighters 97 if you have King of Fighters 98. 98 was just an upgraded version of 97. Uh, it's it's a much better game. Just play that. And, and that's that's sort of the problem that I have here. You have lots of games that were known to be on the Neo Geo systems, and you are not uh, you are not getting these games on here. Where is Windjammers? Where are games like uh, as as hokey as it sounds? Nam 1975. League, somebody said League Bowling. Where Shock Troopers is nice. Shock Troopers is a nice addition. Where are the Bubble Bobble games? Where is Puzzle Bobble on there? You 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 have to put these games. It's it's it can't constantly be this thing. It can't constantly just be. Oh look, another way to play all my fighting games. Now don't get me wrong. I carry warriors. Uh, Ninja Combat. Uh, if even even sticking with the fighting game thing, Ninja Masters was a fantastic fighting game. Even even like, and understand, I am somebody who I have said before that an arcade one-up machine for Neo Geo would be phenomenal. I I it would if it came out at a reasonable price something like $300 which I still am not entirely sure is reasonable but if it came, if this came out at $300 I would buy it. I would probably buy this one. Uh even though there's no internet capability which should be what's happening, right? You you did, if this had internet capability it'd be way better immediately. If you put if you put Windjammers and internet connectivity on this machine, you would sell Five times as many machines as they're going to like this. What about Windjammers 2 Arcade? Uh, the, well, here's the thing. Uh, the, the reason, I, and I know that this is why. These games, I think for the most part, these games were developed by SNK. Some of those games, some of those other games like Puzzle Bobble were developed by Taito. So they're not probably licensed to be, they, they would have to get licenses to have some of these other games. But you have to do that. You're, you're going to have to get some of these licenses. Uh, uh, so what I did was... Uh, I can get a number of these games. Well, Ronan, you can get them on a Switch, but 
it, it it's the arcade experience. It's the it's the little stand up experience. Which again, five hundred dollars is a bit is a bit pricey to be spending on the on the three quarter arcade experience. But it's still something that people like, and you know, it's a cool looking thing in the house. I mean, let's imagine we we have the stream set up, and in the background, I've got a Neo Geo machine. Come on, that's kind of cool. Uh, so what I what I wanted to do was. I wanted to talk about uh, some of these games that are not on here. That uh, I have a list of uh, games that are developed by uh, the companies for the Neo Geo machine for the Neo Geo company, and I want to know why some of these games can't be on there. Because there's a lot of stuff here, right? There, there's um, Aggressors of Dark Combat. That's a fighting game. No one cares. No one cares that Aggressors of Dark Combat is there. Cross Swords, Cross Swords 2 anyway. Some people might care that that's not on there. But for the most part, kind of not. Twinkle Star Sprites is a, is a game that anybody who has played it loves it. They talk it up. Why is that not on there? That was developed by ADK, the same company that developed the World Heroes games, and the World Heroes games are on there. So why are why is Twinkle Star Sprites not on there? Uh, there's Ninja Masters here. I'm jumping through some of them. I'm jumping through some of the ones that I remember playing. Pulse Star, Viewpoint, uh, uh, Cross Swords, Ninja Combat. Ninja Combat was uh, Alpha Denshi. Um, Ninja Combat was like a beat 'em up, and it was a great beat 'em up. It was good. Uh, Ninja Commander, War Heroes, um, <laughs> SNK versus Capcom. Why? I mean, yes, it's a fighting game, so it still falls under the fighting game problem that I'm having, but that's an extremely popular fighting game that a lot of people might not have even had the chance to play. Put it on there. Uh, <laughs> Karnov, um, Windjammers. Uh, uh, was King of the Monsters, King of the Monsters, right? That that was on here. Neo Bomberman, Bomberman games. There was Neo Bomberman games. Uh, there was Turf Masters, Sengoku's on there. Was Strike? Oh my God, Strike! Right, Striker, nineteen forty-five plus. Oh, SNK versus Capcom is hated. Well, wait, what's the? What's the one that ever that people like? I know people that like that. Or is it the other way around? Is it Cap? Is there? Wait, yeah, I don't ever remember hearing that that was hated. I was interested in getting either King of Monsters 1 and 2 uh, on the Switch sometime, but wasn't sure about them. They're good. They're good. Capcom versus SNK. Okay, that's right. There was an SNK versus Capcom also. That's right. I, I forgot about that. I, yeah, it was kind of messed up. Um, but yeah, Striker 1945 is is fantastic. Alpha Mission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's there. Um. There goes League Bowling, uh, Metal Slug Nom 1975. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Super Sidekick, Soccer Brawl. Uh, oh, it looks like Top Players Golf. And what was the other golf game? They It looks like they're different. They, it looks like they have different listings here. Uh, so I don't know if they were different games or what. Uh, huh. Puzzle the Pawn. Blazing Star, the Burning Fight. These are games. Oh yeah, okay, you did correct that. Um, these are games that either were were enjoyed, or maybe people just didn't get a chance to play them. Every time people play Panel the Pawn or Puzzle the Pawn, they love it. You know. Uh, so so why is it constantly the same list of games? This is a problem that I'm having with these machines it, it and if it if it was affordable for me i would consider getting it even with the 50 games that are on there i would just hope that there's a way to add more games later on but they kind of keep doing this you know they're going to do it again they're going to in some way they're going to release another mini system another way to play this stuff and it's going to be the same list of fighting games and i love fighting games but you just there's more stuff on the system there's more stuff there to play and they're not it, they're not going with any of it. I was just playing Puzzle the Pond. Yeah. The reason why fighting games are near jail is because they sell. They they do, but but it was soda. Here's my issue. I have never heard anybody say, "Oh boy, I can't wait to go back and play King of Fighters '94." Never, never, ever, 
ever have I heard anybody ever say that. Not even 95. 96 is the first, is, is usually the earliest I hear people saying they want to go back to. But 97 and 98 especially were so good that that's usually the earliest. Hey, Linky, uh, that's usually the earliest anybody wants to go back with King of Fighters games. Sam show, people rarely go back to the first one because the later ones were better. Metal Slug, okay, yeah, you've got Metal Slug where people have their own favorites and they'll jump to each one of them. Fatal Fury, let's let's be honest, Fatal Fury is not great, especially when you talk about some of the later ones. For anybody, it was, if you'd never played like Real Bout Special, oh my God, Real Bout Special was fantastic, was a significant upgrade to Fatal Fury. There's no reason to go back to Fatal Fury 1. World Heroes, there's no reason to go back to World Heroes 1 when World Heroes uh, Perfect was was perfect for for world heroes games there there's there are, even if you wanted to stick to the 50 game limit you could remove a decent chunk of these games and replace them with more interesting games if you if you even without internet connectivity people would be happy if you put wind jammers on this machine people would be happy if you put puzzle bobble on this machine even without internet connectivity they would sell more units that way. People would be more interested in them and lower the price. Uh, <laughs> hack thing in that drone game. Well, Ronan, here's the problem with that. Here, here's the biggest issue with that. Hack the thing and put your own games on it. That means you're still playing. You're still paying five hundred dollars for this machine. If your intention is to hack, is to pay $500 and then do a bunch of technical stuff to it, you would be better off going to Micro Center and buying one of those DIY arcade machines with a RetroPie built into it and then adding all of the games that you want yourself or building a small arcade machine or, or buying like, an, like a hollow arcade cabinet, putting a gaming PC in there and then adding your own games yourself without using that $500 initial investment. That's my problem whenever people see, because I agree with you. Yes, if, I, if, if somehow I got one of these for $100, my first instinct would be to open it up and try and put more games in it. But it would be ridiculous for me to intend to do that and also pay the $500 initial cost of buying the machine itself just because it's red. Right, just because it looks like, because that's what people will probably say. Oh, but it looks like a Neo Geo machine. Yeah, but for five hundred dollars, I can just I can buy an arcade machine, paint it red, get multicolored buttons, and then put a retro pie in it and add whatever games I want. Sure, it'll be one hundred and fifty pounds because it's a CRT. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you might as well make a make a meme arcade cabinet. That you you can do it for less than five hundred dollars. So the idea of, of dropping five hundred dollars on one of these with the intention of opening it up and then adding more games just doesn't make any sense. I don't think it would happen. But if Capcom is a fifty arcade, what games would you? Uh, that's that's difficult. I would need to sit down because uh, Capcom games could be. Uh, th there's kind of a lot and then there's kind of not, like when you think about Capcom games typically the first thing you think of unfortunately like Neo Geo is you go right towards fighting games but then you have games that were popular like Three Wonders you know the, there was a game called Three Wonders that had three different games on it which was fantastic uh, but you're already sitting down uh, <laughs> I was thinking Sage or Mage or something <laughs> yeah it was a MAME, MAME. Uh, which I what does MAME stand for it's arcade machine emulation right it's it's like a, a multi 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 arcade machine emulation uh i don't know i'm probably making that up uh i mean we say meme for all we know it's mammy i don't know uh uh but if it's cheaper than this machine then why invest? and that's but ronan that's my point all doing all of that you can look this up later don't leave the stream uh <laughs> You can look this up later. Micro Center sells these DIY retro arcade machines. They're like a kit that is exactly this thing. It is a tabletop size arcade setup. They also sell the full size ones. They're like two or three hundred dollars, and they come with the retro pie and all the buttons. And you get to and you DIY. It. You you build the whole thing yourself. You put it all together, and then you 
can add whatever games you want to the RetroPie, and then it works fine. They're a couple hundred dollars. If your intention is to add a bunch of extra games, that's a better route for you than paying the $500 for this because it's red and then going and still having to buy a retro pie and do a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, my Google wasn't right. Multiple arcade machine emulator. Hey, I got most of that right. <laughs> I feel like I got arcade machine emulator. Did I get multiple right? I don't know. I think I got multiple right. All right. Uh, 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 yeah, a little, a little pat on the back from myself there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so this is, it's very cool. And I would really love a Neo Geo arcade machine, but I'm a collector. So what I would really love is a Neo Geo real arcade machine and then start collecting Neo Geo arcade ROM, arcade uh, of, of, of carts. I love those. I think that they're great. And I've seen those consoleized Neo Geo machines where it, it takes the arcade carts, but it plays on your television. I don't know. It's just not the same. I, there's, there's something about it. I, I think if you're going to do... Um, I think if you're going to do real arcade style like that, uh, other than something like a super gun, uh, for anybody that's not familiar, a super gun is basically a consoleized arcade machine that you can then hook other boards up to. I, I know that, um, you can get like CPS one, two, and three boards on there. Uh, supposedly there's an adapter for an AOMI. And then I think super gun actually has an adapter for Neo Geo carts. Uh, it's probably expensive. Doesn't have all the games you want. Yeah. Uh, I just buy the games that I want instead of wasting five. Yeah, instead of wasting five hundred dollars and space and and space. Space is another issue, obviously, that you're you're contending with if you want to do some of these things. You know, and if you want a full size arcade machine, you have to contend with space. Not everybody is. You know, if you're on a fourth floor walk up apartment, uh, n not everybody wants to fill their apartment with arcade machines and then sleep on top of one of the machines. Although that does sound. It, wildly uncomfortable and also kind of cool uh <laughs> yeah you have to be really dedicated and kind of have to lie. I have a lot of money uh still better than capcom killing machines uh, using a suicide board on the main board <sighs> sorry i had to take a swig of my iced tea here a 3k computer one of those yeah it's just i i i, I thought the news the news came out about this machine earlier this week and I thought it was really cool. And then I saw the price. And then I saw the games. And I immediately lost interest. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get lucky. I don't. I, I so far I haven't seen anything about where this is going to be available. If you're going to have to order it from them, or if this is going to be something you can buy in the stores. If this is something that you can buy in the stores, and they go crazy on sale, I would consider getting one. But realistically, it probably ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> There's a better option. Download, yeah, download Fightcade and buy a cheap arcade stick. Well, uh, Ronan, if you're if you're talking about a five hundred dollar price point, you could download Fightcade and buy a really good arcade stick. <laughs> she gets serious. <laughs> uh, I'm not used to arcade sticks anyway. I'd rather use a controller so I play them on PC or just get a real Neo Geo. Yeah, well, the elements buying a real Neo Geo and then buying games for it is way more expensive than that. Uh, the, a Neo Geo itself will cost you a few hundred dollars now, and then the games themselves are still a hundred to two hundred dollars a piece. It's and they, that's what they were when they first came out. It's it's crazy. I Neo Geo is a system that I always thought was really cool, and I always knew I would never, ever, ever care to own one because it's way too much money. I would for that kind of money, I would rather have an arcade uh, Neo Geo arcade machine and buy the because the arcade carts are cheaper than the home carts. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't get it. But. We're going to switch topics. Uh. I forgot I put that picture there. So, this one's going to hurt. Uh, I'm sure everybody heard. Uh, this one's going to hurt a lot, of, a lot of people. We're going to get a lot of hurt feelings here. I uh, told you it was going to suck. <laughs> so, in the works for a little while has been a live action Netflix remake of Avatar The Last Airbender. And... Most people, because it's live action, associated it with the M. Night Shyamalan disaster 
and assumed that the show was going to be bad. There was hope, though. There was there was a real budget. There was some decent screenshots. We saw some some okay pictures, and most importantly, there was real passion behind it. Why? Because the showrunners, uh, Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konetsko, Konietzko, uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, they were involved with the show. They were the original creators of uh, the original show, if I remember right. Uh, right? Yeah, they were the creators of the original show. They were with the original show uh, throughout it. So the idea, the fact that they were with this show was very interesting. Now, I, I'm I'm gonna try not to spoil a lot of things. There were things about the show that I heard they were going to change. This is before they left. I had heard that they were going to change, but they were things that made sense, and I appreciate that. I I I don't need a shot for shot remake even though that's really what everybody wants is a shot for shot if you're gonna do it and you said it was a shot for shot remake of the original people would be much happier but there were some things that they were going to change up that i that i would have liked i would have liked a little more flesh into azula's uh backstory maybe a cutscene here and there um and i would have liked a better resolution for her i think that there could have been a, a more interesting resolution for her um one of the complaints about the original show, about the animated show, was that the resolution, uh, the the energy bending, which is what we'll call it, feels like it came out of nowhere. It doesn't feel like it was teased anywhere in the show. So it all of a sudden just sort of appeared in the last couple of episodes. And there were a lot of people that were kind of annoyed by that. The The, the talk was that they were going to add some backstory to give that some weight, to make it understandable that, okay, that is something that could possibly happen. Because we had no idea that that could possibly happen literally until like two or three episodes before the show ended. And a lot of people took that as, wow, that just kind of came out of nowhere. So they were talking about changing certain things like that, or rather adding certain things, which I don't mind. I like that. Then... We got the news this week that the franchise creators left the Netflix show. And it was like a death sen death sentence. Most of us were not expecting a great show, but I, for me, I was ex I was at least expecting a watchable show. This is unfortunately bad. Uh, this is probably one of the worst things that could have happened to the show. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe when all of this is said and done, the show comes out and it's actually really good. But I, I'm pretty sure most of us in here who have watched Avatar are not expecting that. Yeah, it's going to be shit we know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of uh, ignoring chat. Oh, uh, Okay. Ronan, this, why did they leave? What I saw, and this is probably the real uh, um, uh, uh, trumpet of doom, right? The, the real signal that, that this is bad. My understanding is they were having creative differences because Netflix wanted things that they did not agree with. That was what I, I had heard, that they that Netflix wanted a darker show, that Netflix wanted to uh, in, in, add in different things, add in uh, a, a more a more edginess to it, real edgy. I know that sounds good, but edgy isn't always the way to go. And supposedly, supposedly, they wanted to be able to include more adult content like maybe sex scenes this is speculation into the show the show is about children <laughs> the the ang ang is a 12 year old uh it's toff is ro roughly the same age 
Like th- this show is about children. So, and, and and early teens. I think Sokka. What was Sokka in the show? Sokka was what? Uh, 16, 17? Aang is technically no. Aang was frozen as a twelve year old and never aged. So he was he, effectively he is a twelve year old. Technically he's a hundred and twelve years old, but he's not a hundred and twelve years old. <laughs> um, so so this is pretty much it's pretty much a death sentence. That's that's pretty much what everybody is expecting, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because while. That that was another thing, Shadow. Uh, I'll I'll talk about that in a second. Um, it it's it's unfortunate because most of us were expecting a, a bad show. Most of us were. I am someone who tries to see that there might be something good to it. You know, maybe there's an entertainment value. We talked about this uh, earlier this week, or was it, or maybe last week, where um, somebody asked why you even need a live action show, and one of the reasons I said, and this is probably the biggest reason, is that there are a lot of people out there who have trouble watching animation, and it's not any different from people who have trouble watching live action. There's a lot of us in here, I imagine, who would rather watch animation than live action. And part of the reason is just that you have trouble connecting with the people in live action as opposed to animation. Other people have it the other way around. Now, Ryan, normally that's what I say. Fine. That's their problem. They're going to miss it. I have only, like, two months ago, I finally watched Avatar for the first time. It was probably about two, two and a half months ago was the first time I watched it. I love this show so much that I want other people to experience the story. Not just the great moments that that are in the show, but I want other people to be able to experience it. There's a lot of video games that I feel this way about. Final Fantasy Tactics is a video game that I feel this way about. I love the game so much, and I love the story so much. And I love the characters and the character development so much that I wish other people could experience it. I know that a lot of people don't want to play video games or they specifically don't like those kinds of games. So if you were to turn Final Fantasy Tactics into a book or a TV show or a movie, probably not a movie because it would be like nine movies. If you did that, I would be happy. I feel that way about Yakuza. I would be happy. Because I would get to see other people ex- in some way experiencing this story that made me happy. You know, and I know people who would really love Avatar's story and would really love the characters. But animation is difficult for them to watch. It's difficult for them to connect with these characters that they see as drawings on a paper. And I can understand that because there are live action shows that I have seen that I think. I have trouble connecting with these characters because all I see are the actors that are playing them. That's a big danger for me. One of one of my biggest things when you're talking about starting a movie franchise, one of the biggest things you can do for me is cast new people so that they can be the faces of these characters. Because if you fill the movie with celebrities, all I see are those celebrities. When you cast Deadshot, was it Deadshot? Uh, and you cast Will Smith, all I see is Will Smith. All I see is the Fresh Prince of the Suicide Squad. I have trouble, and the bigger celebrity, the worse it is, I have trouble disconnecting that celebrity from all of the other things they do and seeing just the character. So for me, live action sometimes is more difficult. It's why it's easier for me to experience animation. I So I understand that. So anybody that says... Well, you need to just you need to just buckle down and watch the animation. That's like saying the same thing to me. That's like saying you just need to buckle down and watch the live action show. If you take some of these stories and you turn them into animation, I would have an easier time watching them. If we take some of these animated stories and turn them into live action shows, other people would have an easier time watching them. So I can I can respect that. Uh, other than Daredevil and some others, uh, but we know what happens. Uh, as weird as it sounds, uh, the best the best shows on Netflix are not the ones that Netflix actually made, of course. Uh, and Final Fantasy Tactics movie series would be pretty rad. <laughs> that it would be absolutely. I think a I think a long running 
Game of Thrones style show for Final Fantasy Tactics would be much better. Tactics didn't have a whole lot of comical moments, so I think something akin to Game of Thrones would work with a little more color to it. Uh, with, with a lot more color to it, really. I think would work well for Final Fantasy Tactics. Let's be honest, the first season uh, is quite goofy. Uh, yeah, that's why I can't stand celebs casting in big roles. It makes it makes most movies with these people impossible to watch. Absolutely. Uh, maybe if they aged up... Uh, say, well, it, it's funny. Um, Mr. L, uh, you said maybe if they aged up Soka um, or Sokka. Uh, it's funny you say that. As, as, in, in particular, it's funny you say that in relation to the sex this the, the idea that they wanted to add sex to the show because Sokka is the only character in the show that it is implied that had sex uh and this is why I'm pretty sure that he's older there was a there was a, a, a thing with him and Suki where um where uh, 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 uh Zuko kept getting in the way of it and then the next day uh like Sokka is like is like whistling and he's he seems real happy go lucky so that's that's more of an adult joke the implication there is that he met up with suki later uh so so that's there there was a character where that might have happened but you know what netflix would do is they would have it happen with other characters they would age up the characters so that they can do this i i promise you if that is their intention when this show starts uh ang and katara are going to be 18 years old i i i guarantee you they will not be 12 year old in that Netflix show guaranteed um I don't know, let me get, uh, the, uh, I feel like with anything uh, popular, it's going to be adapted multiple times in different ways uh, if it ends up being good then great if it ends up sucking uh, then to me uh, it won't ruin my yeah, yeah, yeah girl it won't ruin it won't ruin the intro the original show is still gonna be there the the problem is, and I I I have a feeling Ryan's gonna say something like this. Um, yeah, yeah. If Ryan, that, that's pretty much exactly what I was gonna say. The problem with that is uh, you get a no. This franchise actually sucks because every other adaptation is garbage from the people. Yeah, th that's what's gonna happen is uh you're gonna get a lot of people who are like Avatar, the Last Airbender. I heard that sucks, and then they're not gonna have any interest in the animation. And then the animation isn't going to go anywhere because of it. Because God knows we all want a season four, even though we shouldn't really need one. Uh, <laughs> but that's what's going to happen, is that it, it, it's going to suck by association. It already happened with uh, Last Airbender, with the, with the Shyamalan movie. There are people who avoided the, the cartoon and uh, because the movie sucked. They heard, that, they heard that Last Airbender movie was terrible, so they avoided the show completely. And again... Other people avoiding it doesn't ruin my enjoyment for the show, but I want other people to enjoy the things that I enjoy. I like the things that I like, and I want to share that with everybody else, so I want them to see it, and I want them to enjoy it. That's why I'm okay with a live-action show, if it's done well. <laughs> Not to mention, when you, re when you redo a series like this, it, the, the optimal way to redo something like this is to... Keep everything relatively the same, but throw in extra stuff, maybe from the comics or something like that. Maybe throw in a few details that were not cleared up. Maybe in the live action show, we find out if Jet is still alive. <laughs> maybe in the live action show, we don't have to travel through the canyon. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I hey, I watched that live action Avatar movie. Why the hell was everyone blue? <laughs> um, so so like I, I'm okay with it, but th this is not a good sign. The fact that these people have left the show is not a good sign. Uh, for live action series, have them cast people that reflect the characters' races. Okay, so so that's another issue. That that was another issue of um of of whitewashing the characters. Uh, casting a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, white people for for lack of a more uh, uh, PC term uh, is that they were going to cast white characters, white actors. Uh, that in and of itself was not a problem. You know, it, it's not like we're watching movies and we turn on a movie and we're like, oh, a white guy, turn it off. It, it's not anything like that. Here is the problem. This is for uh, I still think great divisive. Uh, Nin Cobra. It's a fun. <laughs> 
I, I don't, it's not, it's definitely not a favorite episode. I think th my problem with the Great Divide episode is that even as filler episodes go, it was just very stale. It was just very stale. I didn't like any of the characters. Um, uh, remember The Witcher? Which I didn't think The Witcher was that bad. I thought The Witcher was a fine show. I like, uh, I like, what's his name? Uh, uh, the, the, the man with the chest? Uh, uh, Jesus, Henry Cavill. And there we go. You toss a coin to your witcher, whole alley of plenty. I, yeah, I like The Witcher. I thought The Witcher was a good show. Um, yeah, it's a filler episode that not even the series wants to acknowledge. Uh, people got pissed off because of Siri. Okay. Oh, so so for um, for the whitewashing thing, for the for the white thing, uh, for the white thing, the problem isn't in, in and of itself that it's white actors that they want to cast white actors. For anybody that has not watched Avatar, what you need to understand is the 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 settings and the characters as they are in relation to uh to our world. Um so so you have four nations. You have four main nations. You got the Air Nation, which were the Air Nomads, you have the Water Tribe, uh, you have the Earthbenders, and, and you have the, the Fire Nation. Everybody knows what happened when the Fire Nation attacked. These are all based on cultures related to our society. Uh, the Air Nomads were based on Buddhist culture, which is why Aang is dressed the way he is. Um, and and they, are, they are a nomadic life. A lot of them are uh, uh, vegan or vegetarian. You know, they don't eat any of the meat. Uh, they, they meditate a lot. Like they're very based on uh, a Buddhist lifestyle and a Buddhist society. The water tribes are based basically on uh, Inuit tribes and uh, Native American tribes. So, so these are uh, they are the two inspirations for those two cultures. The Fire Nation is very much Asian inspired. It, that is very much uh, Chinese and Japanese a, a, in, inspirations uh, in in everything about their society and their architecture and their art, character design, outfit design, stuff like that. The Earth Nation is the one that I'm not entirely familiar with. Uh, you can tell me it, what what real life parallel uh, the Earth Nation Earth Nation draws from, because uh, I'm not too familiar with with uh, where that would be. Um, yeah, Fire Nation is more imperial, more imperialist Japan uh, and Earth and Earth is okay. So Earth is more China. Fire Nation is more Japanese. Okay, so Earth is Mongolia. Okay, so yeah, so you have you have those two separations. None of those cultures, none of those cultures involve the white European aesthetic. And that's really what it is. When we talk about, when we talk about white, uh, typically you mean uh, a European sort of aesthetic. Or even when you talk about America, when, when people talk about white American, uh, Amer white Americans f were European. They, they came over here. Uh, there, there's an argument that says that when... When Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, that's where American history stops because that's where an offshoot of European history begins. There's, and that's a justifiable argument. Yeah, the European aesthetic doesn't come in until Korra. So we're talking about The Last Airbender. We're talking about the previous show, which does not include that. So the idea of casting white actors like like white european actors doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for the aesthetic of the show for the for the setting of the show with one exception i will i will give one exception and i will uh, i know that i will probably get disagreed with on this one but when i first watched through the show i remembered thinking this and I just recently watched through the whole show again, and when he popped up, I thought the same thing. The combustion bender. Am I the only one that thinks that is like a, an American guy? I, I wish I had a picture of it. I wish I had an easier... Yeah, Sparky Sparky Boom Boom Man. Or Sparky... Was it Sparky Sparky Boom Man? Yeah, it was Sparky Sparky Boom Man. Um, When I first saw him, my immediate thought was, oh, this guy is like, this This guy's got to be the only guy on the show from America, right? <laughs> like that, there's something about the, I mean, he, he looks like Drake, first of all. The, the guy looks like Drake. Uh, I think so anyway. Uh, looks like a, like a beefed up Drake. By the way, great power. 
a great I I love the combustion bending when he does it. Uh, but when Pali does it in, in Korra, it's really cool too because she bends it, uh, which makes perfect sense. The boulder was, yeah, the boulder was set to be cast by The Rock, uh, which apparently also, Ryan, the boulder was uh, was something like a rejected design for Toph. Like they were going to go with a big muscular dude for Toph and then they changed it. So uh, it, it's, uh, either it was either the boulder or it was the emerald, uh, the ember, the ember island players version of Toph that they had said that that was supposed to be like an early style of of character design for Toph until they changed it to the much better version. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the boulder, by the way, is a fantastic uh, character. I love that. Um, but yeah, it's that's the only exception is is combustion man. Other than that, uh, yeah, the the white European aesthetic doesn't work with anybody. So so casting characters in that role doesn't make sense. I mean, let's let's be honest. Any one of those characters, any one of them. I mean, whether you're talking about Aang or whether you're talking about Toph or Katara or or Fire, even Fire Lord Zuko and uh, Fire Lord Zuko, uh, even Fire Lord Ozai, any one of these characters could be played by Scarlett Johansson. That's just truth. That's that. That's. I uh, listen. I don't make the rules. I just follow them, and that's that's what the rule is. The the, the rule is the truth. And Scarlett Johansson can play anywhere. It, Scarlett Johansson can play Appa. Let, let's let's come on. Am am I wrong? Am I wrong? L listen, if I'm if I'm wrong, uh, I donate a thousand dollars right now. That's it. <laughs> and Zac Efron. Um, Disney had to sense the cast Eastern and Asian actors in the uh, live action Aladdin and Mulan. Yeah, Mulan, unfortunately. Uh, her voice coming out of Apple. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson is just going to play everyone. It's going to be like uh, it's going to be like the Nutty Professor where where Eddie Murphy plays a bunch of different characters, but they're all Scarlett Johansson and they're all every character from Avatar. <laughs> yeah, uh, giant lion turtle at the end of the, at the end of the series. Scarlett Joe, Scar Joe. There we go. Uh, well played. <laughs> uh, uh, Appa even, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Frank, <laughs> I just noticed that. Her voice coming out of Zappa. Dude, if, if, now if Frank Zappa shows up and is played by Scarlett Johansson, that's just going to be crazy. We're, we're, we're all, we're all off the rails here. Uh, <laughs> uh, Andy Circus should play Momo. Not awful. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so, so there are a lot of issues. There are, there, there's, I, I try to see the best possibilities in things. I really do. The problem is there's so much that, that we seem to be on the verge of going wrong. Uh, there's so much that can go wrong. You know, the reality is this is probably not going to be a good show. I think, excuse me. I think. If you've watched and you really love the original Last Airbender Avatar, you're not going to like the show at all. I think I I honestly predict 100% you're not going to like the show. If you have never seen Avatar Last Airbender, I think that this show is uh, the best this show is going to be able to do is watchable. That's it. I don't think it will get anywhere past watchable, and that's assuming you have not seen the animation to compare it to. Absolutely. Uh, and that was my problem with uh, with the live-action movie, which I have not watched the live-action movie. I think I need to sit down and watch it, everybody. I think I do. I think I really do need to watch that movie. But one of my one of the reasons I I never saw either one of them uh, and, and it, one of the things with the movie was that everybody told me, don't bother with the movie, just watch the show. So I thought that everybody was saying that the movie wasn't awful, but there's no point in watching it, just watch the show. That's what everybody said. That's what I thought everybody was saying. And then I, I saw a clip of it, and I was like, oh my god, no, this is actually a terrible movie. Which kind of makes me want to watch it more, right? <laughs> It, it kind of makes me want to watch it a little bit more, knowing how bad it is. Because now, see, that's the danger. If you watch the last Airbender movie and didn't watch the show, the danger is maybe this is a good movie. And then you realize, wow, it's not. 
But when you go into it knowing that it's terrible, there's this air of, okay, I am in for a wild ride. Let's do this thing. The Rock should play top then uh, just to get the whole idea of full circle. Could you imagine? No. Actually, no. Uh, Gabriel, have Toph be played as a kid like normal. Actually have the boulder played by The Rock in the in the live action show. It You would only need, because realistically, you would only need to do it once. When you, when you have them in the tournament where they introduce Toph. The boulder was in a few other scenes, but if he wasn't in those scenes, it wouldn't really change it too much. It was just fun to see him. Like the the few other times that you see the boulder, it's mostly just a callback. It's just fun. Like, hey, look, the boulder's there. It's not mandatory. He doesn't do anything to the story that requires him to be there. So why not have him just once on the show and have it played by uh, Dwayne Johnson? Except, again, yeah, give Toph her supersonic scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a quick comedy thing, comedy relief thing. It's one big thing. Because for anybody that's seen the show, when the, bowl, <laughs> when the boulder fights Toph, it is probably one of my favorite moments. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's actually a clip that I was going to download and have uh, set to my video board. Uh, so we can play that clip every once in a while. Because that's, that's such a funny clip. The end of that fight is just hilarious. So imagine The Rock. And I understand, I like Dwayne Johnson. I like him as as an actor. I like him when he does funny things in movies because I do think that he's kind of comical. I think that I think that while he's not exactly a comedian, I think that his his size and his physique and his appearance uh adds a certain sort of humor to when he does things. There's a movie was a Central Intelligence where it was him and Kevin Hart and the the movie is that he is a a CIA agent who needs Kevin Hart's help. They were friends in high school. They were friends in high school and then but he was real big, like really big in high school. So he got ripped over like the last 20 years. He just got jacked and he looks like the rock. But when you see him, he's wearing like a unicorn t-shirt. He's got a fanny pack. He's wearing jean shorts. Like it is it's 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 such a funny contrast to the big muscular rock that we've that we've seen for so many years that it, it it in and of itself was funny and then his performance in the movie is also funny because he's basically like an innocent nerd in the movie so it's funny to watch the rock act this way i like him i like him as an actor he's going to be black adam which i'm looking forward to absolutely you know, he the rock was fine. Ooh, your ideas are intriguing oh. to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. Hey, Tomic, uh, two ninety three. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Um, like I, I, I like him. I, I liked him in the Fast and the Furious movies. The Fast and the Furious movies were, they were, they were popcorn movies. They were cheesy and they were hokey. Uh, sp specifically the later ones, like four and five and after. Uh, but he played the character that he was supposed to play very well in those movies. You know, the the movie, it, it's not his fault that they're popcorn movies. He did a great job as, uh, as what's his name in Moana. He did a great, I like The Rock. So I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing him throw, throw him in there for a scene. That would be great. The boulder feels conflicted about fighting a small child. No, I like the next one. Where he's like, the boulder is over his conflicted feelings. <laughs> you know, Netflix can win so good faith. Uh, have the creators make a third animated Avatar show. Oh my God, yeah. I can't like any of the fast movies. Uh, they're also bad. Yes, yeah. I Ryan, I liked I, I liked the first one, uh, because I I I liked the first one because a lot of people think that those movies, especially early on, a lot of people were like, oh, it's like Vin, it's like Vin Diesel and he does all this stuff. And then the first movie is actually really about uh, Paul Walker's character, which I find it when you watch it that way, when you when you realize that the movie is more about his growth than it is about any of the other characters. It's a much more interesting movie to watch. The second one was okay. There was two, There was a, actually a lot of CG in that movie, which I didn't like. The third one I liked because uh, the third one was a different cast, and it was about drifting, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of drifting. Uh, so And I liked the setting. I liked the fact that they were in Japan. Uh, all that was really good. The fourth one is where you started to get into this sort of schlocky popcorn 
oh, they they got to battle the drug dealer. They've got to battle the evil race car driver. Like, that's when you got real schlocky. But the first three movies I actually thought, well, the first and third movie especially. The third one's my favorite. But the first and third movie I actually thought were really, really good. Uh, if a fan of drifting, you should work for Nintendo. <laughs> I'll work in the controller division. Uh, the first one had an idea and stuck to it at least, uh, so I'll give you that credit. After the first one, they started desperately trying to one-up themselves on stuff. Yeah, and, and, and Ryan, and I think that's why I like the third one, because the third one, the stunts were basically drifting, and drifting uh, is a real thing. Race car drifting is a real thing. So it it felt more believable to watch the third movie and watch. And I have a thing with the third movie where the third movie is the only movie out of what? Eight Fast and the Furious movies? The third movie is the only one where race car driving is the point. It is how the hero gets into trouble. It is how the hero battles the enemies. And at the end of the movie, it is how the movie is resolved. It is about race car driving. And that's one of the reasons I think that the third one is the best movie because it is the one that is most about the point of those movies, which is Fast and Furious. Yeah, Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. It is He, he gets into trouble and goes to Japan because he is in a race and he crashes and a pe someone almost gets hurt. Like him and the other people almost get hurt. Uh, and it's like his third strike or something. When he gets to Japan, he gets mixed up with race car drivers, and that's how he gets mixed up into uh, into that world. This is where the plot develops. And then at the end of the movie, they literally settle things with a race. It is about race car driving. It is more about the point than any of the other movies. Fast and Furious. The the third one, yeah, Tokyo Drift is like it's like an anime. Uh <laughs> Uh, if you want, uh, I wonder if you know uh, how they live in Tokyo. What do you mean? Uh, the trans. I like the transporter movies. I like the first one especially, but you know they're not realistic. <laughs> how do they compare to the transporter? Uh, the transporter. Um, yeah, uh, the transporter movies were dumb fun, but the first one was probably the best one. I do think the transporter movies got worse with two and three. Not awful, just worse. Uh, Seven's ending made me break down in tears. And, and that wasn't even because of the resolution of the movie. That was because of what had happened with Paul Walker and the tribute that they threw in there at the end. So I appreciate that. Uh, oh, I do like the scene uh, where the dude tells him that police cars are factory tuned. So if you go fast, which real edgy, I've actually heard is true. Uh, I have actually heard that that's true. That uh, if, if you're... If your cars are tuned and the when when the and that happens in America too, actually, believe it or not, that does happen in America. I've I've seen those uh those helicopter camera like following the car chases. I have seen those where the the police can't catch up with the person, and they decide that it is more dangerous for them to continue chasing the person because they're it's less likely that they're going to catch them. It's more dangerous for them to continue the pursuit than to stop. So they break off the pursuit. I have seen those helicopter footage where the cops break off pursuit because they simply can't catch the other person. And it's more dangerous for them to have that person continue to drive 150 miles an hour. Uh, was this? Yeah, but the Universal Ride Sex. Uh, sorry, I'm late. What's today's topic? Uh, Ty, I was talking about um, the, the, the changes to the Avatar, the last Airbender Netflix show. Uh, we're we're kind of at the end of that, though. Uh, uh, Fast and Furious were based on reality at some point. Um... The first movie, uh, Gabriel, the first movie and the third movie, you didn't have a lot of wacky jumps. You know, when you get, when you get to like the seventh and eighth Fast and the Furious movie, they're, they're, they're literally drifting tanks, right? They're, they're, they're driving tanks out of cargo planes, uh, which is actually a scene from one of the movies. They, they definitely separated from this idea of keeping it realistic. In the first movie, they were, driving race cars on the street they were you know they were quarter mile races uh the the most outrageous thing that happens in the first one is that they drive under a truck which is actually possible but it has to be the right kind of truck and all the all the all the everything has to be set up perfectly for it 
<clears throat> and then the third movie was about drifting, which is very real. If you're not familiar with race car drifting, I recommend that you either do a bunch of YouTube searches or that you go and watch Initial D, uh, with the, which is an anime that is centered around drifting, which is how I got in, interested in drifting in the first place. I've never done it myself because, you know, my, my 2009 Sebring can't handle it. Uh, <laughs> can you Can you drift on tank treads? And whether or not you can... Fast and the Furious will try and do it. And that's why I say that it's unrealistic. They got to a point where in the, in the first movie, in the first Fast and Furious movie, there aren't really a lot of scenes where you go, what? Come on. By the eighth one, yeah, you're, you're pretty much doing that every 20 minutes. <laughs> Fast and the Furious Transformers. Dude, a Fast and the Furious Transformers crossover might not be bad. Uh, multi-track drifting. Yeah, what's that? Uh, it's like a train, but it's on. Uh, no, uh, you know what I've seen that. Um, Ryan, I, maybe that's what you're talking about. Where it's it's the trolley problem, where uh, you have to hit the switch to move the trolley from one track to the other. But somebody had somebody did it where like you'd want both people to die on the tracks. So that's the picture of the multi-track drifting, and it's a train drifting on two sets of train tracks. <laughs> And that's great. It's such a great thing. Deja vu. Yeah, by the way, if you watch Initial D, uh, the anime, you're going to hear a lot of Eurobeat music, which is very good, but it's a lot of it. Uh, but it's very good, but it's a lot of it. But it's very good. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so so we, we, we went off the rails, ironically, uh, uh, no pun intended there. Uh, with this topic, but the Avatar Last Airbender Netflix show is basically at this point dead in the water. Uh, we it's it's the the showrunners who created the original show were working on the Last Airbender show, uh, the live action show, and they have now left. And they have cited creative differences. And knowing Netflix, this is we are on the verge of a disaster. Um, the only good news, uh, the the best news about this is that when this show comes out, and more than likely they'll do the same thing they always do, which is they'll drop the whole season at once. When this show comes out, we're going to have lots of meme material. <laughs> like the one I just put in Discord. I'll, I'll have to check that out. I don't have my Discord open right now. Yeah, it's and expect water bottles and thermoses in the back. What was it? Uh, was it Game of Thrones that had a Starbucks cup? on one of the tables and then they digitally removed it. <laughs> uh is it like prequel bad in terms of memes? I don't know. I don't know. I I can't wait to see it. I can't at this point at this point I want to see it because it's gonna be a disaster. Oh real edgy, you're not familiar. Uh oh so so what we're talking about for anybody that doesn't know about that, uh there was a scene in a Game of Thrones episode and I, I think it was the last season where as the camera was panning in, I think it was panning into Daenerys, and there was the table there with all the cups and stuff. There was a Starbucks cup left on the table, and you could see it straight up. They removed the episode, digitally removed the cup, and then re-uploaded the episode. So the only time you could see it was that first run, was that very first run. How the fuck did that happen? Edgy, there are mistakes like that throughout TV shows. Uh, I'm sure there are compilations of those kinds of mistakes all over the place. I've seen a scene from 24 where you could see the cameraman. Uh, there's a scene, there's a scene in the X Files where X Files on DVD went from 4:3 to widescreen to 16:9. The problem is. That the the when you film something in four three, you don't have to worry about anything that's off the screen. So when they went to sixteen nine, there were things that were supposed to be off screen that were now on screen. It's hilarious. It's so funny. There's a scene in Jurassic Park where you can see a hand push the Raptor model into the kitchen. Uh, uh, Fellowship of the Rings had a car in the background at one point. There's a uh, there's a deleted scene from the Mummy, where the the first Mummy movie, where he gets out of the train and it's like a it's like a top up 
view. It's like a bottom up view. I mean, so it's like the the camera angle is like him from from down here, and then you could so you can see the sky. You can see him him against the sky, and he's like doing magic. He's like he's doing this, and there's a plane flying overhead. <laughs> and it's supposed to be what 1920 something and there is a commercial airliner flying overhead you can't hear it but you can see it uh and that, that's a deleted scene that was removed but those are the sorts of things if somebody didn't watch that yeah no no it's not in the movie it's in the deleted if you have the dvd i think it's in the deleted scenes there too uh but those are the sort of things that you know in a plane flying in the air is not unusual you can go outside right now and look in the sky and there might be a plane there it's not unusual so it's understandable that somebody watching this back like an editor would look at it and say okay there's a plane that's fine no problem and then it wouldn't be until later that they went oh my god it's 1924 there's not supposed to be a plane there (laughs) the movie gladiator you could see someone wearing jeans oh my god well in the last airbender movie uh there's a mistake where you can see the whole movie which is Probably one of the biggest movie mistakes of all. Uh, <laughs> the T-Rex car scene where the glass in the car breaks is not broken and it breaks again. Those are the kinds of mistakes that I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing stuff like uh, where where things break in a bad timeline. There's uh, in Spider-Man, in the original Spider-Man movie, the, the, the first Sam Raimi movie. When Spider-Man throws the two guys through the windows and then uh, when Mary Jane gives him the upside down kiss... He throws them through the windows, and then the windows are fixed in the next scene uh, because they shoot out of sequence. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's the sort of thing that happens with movie making. I, I'm fascinated with the idea of movie making. I would love to be on set for when a movie is made, but those are the sorts of things that happen. You, you, they, they shoot things out of sequence, so you get, you know, characters who, who have dirt smudges. And then in the next scene, the smudges are in the wrong way, and then in the next scene, they're back to the first way. I've been on movie sets. Have you really been on movie sets? Oh, man. I would love to be on, on an actual movie set. Like a, like a big budget movie set. Not like, you know, some guy filming a TikTok. Uh, <laughs> there's a whole show full of movie movie blunders and errors like that. Yeah, it's always, it's such a fascinating thing. I, I love it. I love, the, I love when that stuff happens. Uh, New York has some really good window fixers. Yeah, right. They're, they're like on the spot. Do you remember this Dutch cop show where in one scene they were chasing someone when the camera changed the car, uh, suddenly it had a different license plate? Uh, it's usually a dedicated continuity person to keep track of of even the small things like a cut to the right show. Yeah, yeah, there, there should be stuff like that. I know, Ryan, that they have stuff like that for um, like brand specialists where they make sure that certain things are visible like for the sponsor for the sponsored brands. Um, and then uh, I know that a lot of movies that have uh, previous stories will have continuity specialists for writers and stuff they'll go through the script and they'll look for continuity errors so yeah i would imagine that they have people on set that some of the good movies have people on set specifically to say okay you can't you can't shoot this scene next because the car is damaged and then it's not damaged here like they they should have somebody for that yeah that's a cool job real edgy i i I think i could absolutely do that i think my favorite movie uh, bloopers are from horror Uh, horror movie bloopers are great because they they sort of go against the scenery. You know, their horror movies are are bloody and violent and, and scary and usually dark and you know, and then you have these people laughing on set, right? The the idea of and I've never seen a a, a I've never seen a, a blooper like this or from a, like a like a Friday the thirteenth movie or a, like a like a nightmare on Elm Street movie. But the idea of like you know, Freddy Krueger comes at you with the claw and he does this and he bumps into the wall and he knocks some stuff over. And then it's like Freddy Krueger and this scared girl who's about to get slashed to death and they're cracking up. They're laughing because it happened because she, she was, she's running from Jason. Jason, the hockey mask killer is going to get her and she's got to get through this door. And she goes to the door and the doorknob falls off. Like, (laughs) you know, those are the things that are like, in a comedy movie, it's like, okay, funny things happen. But when you watch a horror movie blooper, it's like, wow, this is, it's, it's just something about the background against what's happening. It's just, it's, it makes it even funnier. Uh, it's hard for any kind of uh, period show. Uh, yeah, I've seen old Doctor Who where they really didn't have the budget to cover up modern fixtures. Yeah, those are always the worst ones. Uh, the old, the further back you go, the less they focused on that sort of thing. So you start to see more, I mean the amount of old movies where you could see like the string 
when things opened up and stuff is just remarkable. Um, the old Berserk outtakes. Berserk? The animation? I've never seen the outtakes for that. Uh, okay. Oh, by the way, that picture there is... Uh, <laughs> That to me is my um, Netflix adaptation version of Azula. <laughs> That's why I put that there. I, I probably should explain that for anybody. If you might not be familiar with the show. She's a firebender. and She's like the villain firebender for, for the later half of the show. Uh, my, my interpretation of Netflix is just giving her a flamethrower. Best animation now takes our Berserk, uh, Fully Cooly, Ruin and Kenshin, and Kill La Kill. I gotta watch. I don't know that I've ever seen anime outtakes. I gotta watch some of that stuff. I gotta track some of that stuff down. That'd be. I'm sure it's on uh, YouTube. But uh, we're changing the topics one more time to viewer topics. Uh, so this is the viewer topics portion of the show. If you have anything that you would like to discuss, uh, if you have questions for me, um, uh, whatever you'd like to discuss. <laughs> Bearing in mind that we've already discussed the Fortnite Apple Google situation. <laughs> uh, the Madoka Magica dub outtakes are downright hilarious. I'll tell you what I have seen outtakes for. I did see outtakes for the Matrix, the Animatrix. The, which, uh, show of hands. Uh, who here has or has not seen the Animatrix, which is the, it's a nine episode uh, set of uh, animated shorts uh, regarding related to the Matrix. I've seen it. I've not seen. It, I've seen it. Seen it. If you are at all a fan of the Matrix in any way, I would recommend that you track it down uh, and you check it out. There is some remarkable animation on there. There are. A small handful of CG animated shows, which uh, the the final flight of the Osiris and the second Renaissance are two of the best uh, things on there. Uh, Animatrix is better than Matrix. I don't know. I would say Animatrix is better than the third Matrix movie and the second one. Yeah. <laughs> Not the first one. I thought the first Matrix was was actually a was actually a really good movie. EAX didn't get their hair raised. Oh no. Um all right. But yeah, if you have any topics that you want to bring up, if you have any questions that you want to ask me, this is also a QA portion. Uh, so you're welcome to. What was your favorite co my favorite concert that I've ever been to? <sighs> my favorite concert that I've ever been to. All right, so I went to the Summer San Sanitarium tour once that had uh Metallica and Lincoln Park. Uh, and then a bunch of other like like Mudvayne, Deftones, uh, and Limp Biscuit, which was which was trash. Uh, but but Lincoln Park and Metallica were fantastic. I went to a concert that had, um, oh my god, uh, oh it's I'm I'm losing my mind here. Uh, Lincoln Park. I've been to like two or three Lincoln Park concerts. Lincoln Park and. Oh, I don't remember who else was there. I just remember having a really good time that one. Uh, oh, The Offspring. I was a big fan of The Offspring and Cypress Hill. I don't know how the hell that happened, but they were in a concert together. Uh, which I've been to like two Cypress Hill concerts in my life too. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would think is my favorite. Oh, you know what my favorite concert was probably would probably have been? Evanescence. I'm trying to think of who the first band was. Evanescence, Flyleaf, and Seether. I I want to say that that's a show that I went to. I've not seen all of them. No, no. Okay, so I saw Evanescence after they changed uh guitarist with um. So it was Amy Lee and it was the new guitarist. And I saw them with Flyleaf. I saw Evanescence before they changed the guitar, so it, was, so it was the original guy with Seether. Evanescence and Seether together were prop. That was probably one of my favorite concerts, uh, just because I loved most of the music lineup. I loved most of the song lineup. I don't even remember who the third band was, and I think I liked them too. Uh, Frampton comes alive. I'm not that old. 
I've never listened to that album too. Uh, Wing Zero. People have told me that that, that I, I've heard that Frampton Comes Alive is one of the greatest albums ever made, and I've never heard it. Uh, bad news. Funimation is re really is is releasing Steelbook, uh, season Steelbooks of Dragon Ball Z, and saying it's four three. I saw that you were saying something about that, but I didn't notice what it was. Uh, but apparently it's the color corrected and film grain removed version from the overpriced set last year. Oh, okay, so it's not. All right, so I don't mind I don't mind film grain being removed, but I'll be honest, fil removing the film grain does sort of take away the charm of some anime. Uh, anime to me, some of my favorite times watching anime were bootleg VHS tapes. So when you've got that bad quality, it does add a bit of charm to the show. I feel like that's not just me. I remember seeing the third Matrix movie at an empty theater. Oh wow, wow. Uh, Greg, what are your thoughts on subpar Smash Brothers beating Platform Mania? Oh, uh, it's fantastic. It's terrific. Uh, like I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. Like I'm gonna be pissed off about it. Uh, I think it's terrific. I think that the that uh, subpar Smash Brothers was a, a fantastic event. Uh, raised what over twenty six thousand dollars. Unbelievable. I hope that we can beat that for extra life this year. I think that would be great. Uh, something to get some stuff. I haven't been to a concert, by the way. You, you mentioned concerts. I haven't been to a concert in a very long time. I wouldn't mind going back to see another concert. Uh, I, I'm the old man, though. I, I've become the old man who is fine standing at the back of the concert seeing my band. The problem is I don't know who I would want to see. I don't know any bands. Like, I, I listen to a lot of electronic music now. So uh, most of my bands don't play music. Unless it's someone like uh, Cell Dweller, uh, Scandroid. You know, it's, it's one of these uh, uh, retro wave or synth wave uh, bands, something like that. Or uh, System of a Down. I, I think System of a Down, I would still want to see in concert. Oh, later, Mr. Sonic. Have a good one. Or Smashing Pumpkins, because I love Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, actually, the the Dragoon, I've seen the Zelda concert twice. I've seen the, the Zelda concert uh, two times uh, with different people. And, uh, yeah, that's... That, that's probably the last concert I've been to. I, I would, I think the Zelda concert is the last concert that I've ever been to. A color correction they did on DBZ uh, was super bad, and it looks uh, overly smeared. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll have to watch some scenes from it just to see how bad it is. Uh, Parshi's Toys fault for locking away their master tapes. Uh, Funimation usually does good. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I have no problem with Funimation. I've watched Funim Funim Funimation. You should be watching. Uh, the only concert I've been to is Sharon, Sharon Lois and Bram. Are you serious? <laughs> uh, last concert and my favorite concert I've been to was a Ninja Sex Party concert. Uh, excellent, excellent. And, of course, I'm not counting concerts at MAGFest or Too Many Games. I'm not counting those. They, they're not. I didn't go there for those concerts. They just happened to have concerts, and maybe I sat there and watched them. I also saw one of the Zelda concerts. I haven't done the Final Fantasy concert. I did a Star Wars one years ago. I went to a, the Star Wars concert, and that was really good. Uh, Martina McBride concert when I was younger. Uh, I missed out on the Zelda Symphony. Yeah, the Zelda Symphony. I still have a great poster from the Zelda Symphony. So I would like to go back again. I mean, with, with COVID, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. I posted a picture the other day of a concert venue in the UK somewhere where they had it all set up. It was all tables. It was all tables that were socially distanced and each table sat like four or five people. Uh, so you and your party could go and sit at a table. I like that. <laughs> have you been to see a pub band? Yes, I have uh, elements. Once I saw a band in a pub and I hated it. And it was not because of the band. Bands in pubs, the music is it's too scrunched together. It's a small area, not designed to have people playing live instruments. It was too loud for me to enjoy any of the music. It was unpleasant. I did not like it. Um, I've seen bands in small venues, actual concert venues. Those are great. But this was a pub. It was not a faraway stage. They were in one corner of the pub. And people crowded around to hear them, and it was just not pleasant. I couldn't hear the instruments separate from each other. It was just not a fun experience for me. The only fun was that I was there with friends, and we were having a good time. That's it. Yeah, part of the charm. See, and, and that's the thing, Elements. I, I come together more 
at a very, very small concert venue, at a restaurant-style concert. What, I, what I've what i come to call restaurant-style concert venue. Well, that's probably more like a pub. Restaurant-style is probably more like a pub. But I've been to real small venues where there is a stage. It is a high ceiling so that the sound has room to travel, but it's still tables and chairs and a bar, not a standing room only concert venue. I've been to venues like that and I like that more than I liked uh, any of the standing venues. Uh I have the Z the CD for the Zelda Symphony. Ooh, I wouldn't mind that. I got to get that. I think the next time I if there's a Zelda concert again, I want to get the CD for it. Um and my chat just reset for some reason. Uh hopefully it's still working. Are you are you working, son? Are you working? Are you working, son? Yeah, here we go. Okay, it's still working. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I, I tickets for the Kingdom Hearts concert, but life went crazy at that time. Uh, a lot of stuff in my dad's estate all happened, and I was so stressed. I got the date wrong. Oh, that sucks. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, during this pandemic, during this pandemic, where there's some games or other media that really helped you deal with social distancing, Animal Crossing was a lifesaver for, for myself and for a lot of other people. Right as the time Animal Crossing came out, Call of Duty Warzone came out. That actually helped me get through all of this uh, very well. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, we're we're still kind of dealing with COVID stuff uh, right now. I'm playing Final Fantasy 14. I'm starting that out, so that helps a lot. Uh, but yeah, I I think Animal Crossing and and uh, Call of Duty Warzone. Ironically, it's it sounds so weird to put them together, but those two games are the games that helped me get through some of the hardest parts of the COVID crisis. It doesn't help that I was dealing with a lot of other stuff too, but uh, they definitely helped eat up a lot of my time. Also, I realize you can either play Final Fantasy VI PS1 or play it on my SNES Classic. SNES Classic is the better version. Uh, have you played Tony? No, I have not played the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater demo. Is that available to everybody? I haven't played that yet. Animal Crossing helped me a lot and Guild Wars 1 and 2. Uh, and that's a that's a good idea, uh, Sliner. Uh, for anybody else, uh, are there games that helped you get through this pandemic situation? Uh, for me, I'm going through my list of anime to watch. I don't binge uh, so that I can count. Uh, I can count the days away. Uh, pre-orders on. Okay, so if you pre-order the game, you can get to the demo. Okay. Avatar: The New Shira helped me. I had watched the New Shira before the pandemic started. Great show, by the way. Shira on Netflix. Listen to me. I'm telling you right now. Trust it. Take take it from your old Uncle Silver here. Shira on Netflix is a terrific show. Please watch it. Uh. Uh, Animal Crossing for me. I've been playing Divinity Original Sin 2 with some buddies. Uh, considering my perennially unemployed status is not much different for me. <laughs> uh, it's a little different, though. It, mentally, it's different. You know, one of the things I keep saying about when I, I was off work for three months, and one of the things I, ha I I feel like I have to keep reminding people is that it was not a vacation. It wasn't like I was. It wasn't like I was three months away from work thinking this is terrific. I was having a pretty miserable time during those three months, so it was not really a vacation. Um, I need to get back to quantum. God, Qu I don't, I've never watched quantum leap all the way through. Never watched it all the way. Through. Even when it was on, like I watched it when it was on television and it was new and I still never watched all the way through it. Uh, Netflix and playing games like Supreme commander, Dawn of war and Warzone got me through the pandemic, uh, animal crossing and Xenoblade and, uh, RE2. I feel AC should be considered for game of the year for the impact this had. Yeah. If you're, if, if you, Mr. L, if you're including, uh, cultural impact, then I do I do think there's an argument for Animal Crossing New Horizons. I don't know. Without it, I don't think so, though. Uh, Animal Crossing did help smash Ultimate Daily. Stardew Valley and RPGs like Icewind Dale. Uh, she is great. I just wish it had a better opening and actual ending credits. <laughs> We're on the edge of greatness. You don't like that intro? I like that intro. The credits I don't really care about because I just skip to the next episode. <laughs> Don't think anyone is in the mood to say nice things about the Netflix originals. Uh, I am. Uh, thank God I'm watching One Piece. I, I watched it when there. Uh, oh, when there was reruns. Oh, okay, okay. So you watched it through reruns. Have you played or seen Danganronpa? I have seen Danganronpa. I have never played it myself. Uh, I don't know if I would. 
Uh, not because I have anything against the game. They're just, I don't see anything to really drag me into it. I watched Shira. That's okay. Uh, what do you think about fighting games being easier for casuals? Um, easier how? Like having easy modes or they're making easier fighting games? I'm curious as to, as to what that is. I think Doom Eternal also helped mostly because I could not pay attention to anything else while I was playing it. Uh, I recently watched BNA. BNA was fine. Uh, it was okay. I, I have no interest in going back to it, but I'm happy I watched it. Uh, uh, when when BNA Season 2 drops, I'll watch it, definitely. Hooray for she Love. It was such a good show. she I thought she was a good show. Uh, also, me and my friends are streaming uh, VTT over here in Brazil. I'm thinking about doing video games. Absolutely. Do it. Easier fighting it. So so just the fact that the games themselves are easier to play is what you mean. Like the like the two button fighting games. Cause I don't like it. I don't like the uh very simple. Now I don't want anything super complicated. King of Fighters 13 is fantastic. But King of Fighters 13 has a lot of mechanics. A lot of mechanics. But then I played cross tag battle. And I was like, wait, it's like two buttons? I, that, that, so that was to me like, wait a minute. D d d wow. As long as the mechanics don't get it, don't get, get it to make it easier for casuals like cross tag. Yeah, when I played cross tag battle, I, I want to say that it only has like two or three buttons. That's a bit bare bones for me. I think that was way too bare bones for me. There's no reason. The first time I played cross tag battle, there's no reason I should be doing 20 hit combos. N no, no chance should I be doing 20 hit combos. And I was. I was absolutely doing 20 hit combos when I first, first time played cross tag battle. Because it's only two buttons. It's only like two or three buttons. Uh, more fighting games that don't trust your that don't uh, turn your fingers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you said what did you say? Uh, yeah, we don't need pretzel mechanics anymore. I mean, King of Fighters, King of Fighters uh, is to me a happy medium. Uh, early like 98, 99. I think that there was enough variety in the characters and enough variety in the moves without throwing six different game modes, five different styles, and a whole bunch of craziness. Uh, you know, other than like trying to do Geese's Raging Storm. Um, I mean, I get, I can get by with the rhythmic, I can get by uh, elements. I can get by with the rhythmic button pushing, uh, not button mashing, button pushing, but there's ton, like go through the tutorial for King of Fighters 13. There's tons of mechanics in that game how to time your moves how to block moves how to dodge moves it it's it's a lot and every one of those things it sounds simple to say but every one of those things is a very involved mechanic you might enjoy pocket rumble uh, despite it having two buttons uh it's no garo or last blade uh button mashing is the only way i can play a fighter nowadays uh, I still need a copy of 13 only play. I, I was like, I miraculously found a copy for PS3. Uh, uh, my King of Fighters 13 is a physical copy for PS3, which apparently is like expensive now. I think that, I think that game, hold on, let me, let me take a look here. Uh, I think the physical PS3 copy, uh, K O F P S three. I think it sells for a, a decent amount of money. Uh, let me go to, I'm, I'm on eBay going to sold listings, uh, $55, $71, $60. Yeah. So, so that, that's pretty decent for a PS3 game. Uh, I like Tatsunoku versus Capcom, uh, Tatsunoku versus Capcom, Tatsunoku Capcom. Uh, I don't know what system that's on. It's on the Wii, right? Tatsunoko versus Capcom on the Wii. I'm seeing here for eighty dollars. What? No way. Oh, that's like the big box. That's like the big box for. Okay, so it looks like thirty, forty dollars for uh, Tatsunoko versus Capcom for the Wii. That's not bad. That's that's a relatively good price. Um. Yeah, Call of Ninety Eight uh, Ultimate Match is dope. 
Uh, that it is. I love that. That's my favorite one. I think Cough 98, Cough 98 is my favorite one. Uh, while on this topic, any fighting games you love and what would you recommend to newcomers? Uh, I absolutely love King of Fighters 98. I think that's one of my favorite fighting games ever. Uh, Third Strike, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike is one of my, is, is a, is an amazing game with amazing animation. Um, X-Men versus Street Fighter. I was a big fan of the early Marvel games. So Marvel, superheroes, X-Men versus Street Fighter, uh, Marvel versus, I didn't like Marvel versus Street Fighter as much. Marvel versus Capcom I did like. Um, what I, what, what fighting game would I recommend to people? Mainstream. I personally, I'd stick with 2d fighters. Uh, oh, oh, um, for 2d fighters, I would say those two, I would say King of Fighters 98 and, uh, the third strike, um, for 3d fighters, Tekken is okay. Uh, I, I think that me personally, I feel that the, uh, that the learning curve for Tekken is very high. So that's, that can be very off putting to people. Soul Calibur is very popular with, with a relatively low ish learning curve. It, it has a low learning curve, but the skill level gets very high. Uh, 98 was Dreamcast and, and arcade, uh, in on Dreamcast, I think for in the U S they called it dream match 99, but Yeah, okay. So so on the Dreamcast, they it was Dream Match 99, but this is 98. It's just it has a uh, three it has a uh, pre-rendered like uh, like newly rendered backgrounds and stuff. This is a great version of the game. If you play this, if you're going to play King of Fighters 98, this to me is the ultimate version of the game to play. Um for 3D fighters, I would say Soul Calibur is really good. I think Tekken has a bit of a skill gap. I would 100% recommend Rival Schools. If you are looking to get into 3D Fighters, I think Rival Schools is an unspoken series that is is just terrific. Uh, the, the only problem with Rival Schools is that they are expensive to buy. If you go to buy Project Justice for the Dreamcast, which was basically Rival Schools 2, it's ex you're going to pay a lot of money for it. You're going to pay a lot of money for a physical copy of it. Assuming, of course, you don't just download it and burn your own copy. Uh, I wish I bought it when it was decent. Yeah, me too. I do. I do kind of wish I bought it when it was a uh, much better price. Yeah, I, I, those are the fighting games I would point people to. Uh, absolutely. And Smash Brothers. You know, Smash Brothers, you know. But but I think we all know Smash Brothers isn't a fighting game. It's a party game. <laughs> all right. Wait, 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 wait. Here's Mike. Here's Mike. Why do you say things that you know will hurt me? <laughs> so pray for Soul Calibur 2 HD Complete Edition on the Switch. Oh, what about Last Bronx? Yeah, what about uh, Battle Arena Toshinden for the PS1? Did you hear that Ubisoft apparently uh, contracted uh, or contacted the creator of Scott Pilgrim? The, the wait, uh, the creator of Scott Pilgrim, you're talking about, um, uh, uh, right, right? Was, was it Edgar, Edgar Wright? Oh, Brian Lee O'Malley. Oh, oh, oh. So, so the, 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 the comic. Wait, uh, wh what creator were we talking about? Edgar Wright directed the movie. Okay. So Brian Lee O'Malley is the creator. Okay. Okay. There we go. I knew it was, I knew it was Edgar Wright was in there somewhere. Um, I, I saw something. I saw that Scott Pilgrim was trending. I didn't know why it was trending. Is that why? Ooh. I wonder if they're talking about a part two. Maybe. Or maybe they're talking about finding uh, a way to get the rights to the game. I don't know. Uh, what about air guys? God's God, no, uh, God bless the ring. God bless the ring. Uh, I no, Ryan, I actually don't, uh, I don't like air guys. Um, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a novelty. Uh, but I don't like air guys because air guys is a, uh, I, I was making a joke about, well, no, no, no. Some people do really like air guys and it is a fighting game. The problem is that Air Guys is is what I call an arena fighter. Air, it, as a three D fighter, it is a it is an open area that you run around in, and so that to me isn't like a fighting game. But some people do consider that a fighting game. I call it an arena fighter. That's what I've always called them. Apparently, Ubisoft contacted the comic creator a day or two ago, and that's all we know. Maybe they want to make a new game. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, like Power Stone. Like Power Stone. Uh, that's an arena fighter to me. There's, it's a, it's an, it's a wide area that you run around in and you attack each other. Bushido Blade, Bushido Blade 1 and 2 on the PS1. They are arena fighters. 
or just re-release the yeah if you re-release the old game you make a billion dollars uh, right, Ryan. If they re-release the old Scott Pilgrim game, they will make enough money to to be able to argue with Epic Games and Apple. <laughs> yeah, that that's what I always turn. I, I always deem them arena fighters because it is a it is an open arena style area that you are free to run around in. See, when we say three D fighters like Soul Calibur and Tekken, you're on a three D plane. And you can you have 3D movement where you can move side to side, but your two characters will always be locked into each other. You're like a binary star. You're always going to be locked into each other in order to fight on that single plane. In a 3D arena fighter, you're running around a big area. <clears throat> that that's what I always learned to call them. I remember playing Power Rangers, the Power Rangers fighting game. Oh boy. Uh, Bushido, Bushido Blade's a fascinating fighting game. I, I, it's funny because I think Bushido Blade gets, uh, doesn't get talked about in fighting games. And I mean, obviously, because it's a PS One game, there's never been a Bushido Blade three. Like the the franchise has never come back from that. But it, it was just a very interesting game with very interesting mechanics. Uh, though we make the Scott Pilgrim. Now that's a thing. Uh, though we make the Scott Pilgrim game. Why not remake the Scott Pilgrim game? If you if you're having trouble getting licensing, just re just make another one. Uh, what about the Sailor Moon fighting game? Isn't yeah? Isn't that the one that's like super duper broken, where one character is, is so damaged, but that's the days before DLC, so you're just stuck with a broken game? <clears throat> They'll do to Scott Pilgrim what they did to Turtles in Time. <laughs> what make it better on the Super Nintendo than it was in the arcade? Because that's what they did to Turtles in Time. I don't know anybody that prefers the Turtles in Time arcade to the Super Nintendo game. Absolutely not. We were complaining uh, just because they might finally re-release uh, re Scott Pilgrim game doesn't mean Ubisoft resolves them from the sexual misconduct. Uh, <laughs> yeah, people are like, no, 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 no. Let's uh, <laughs> may <laughs> elements. Maybe it doesn't resolve them from the sexual misconduct, but let's hear them out on re-releasing the game. Uh, no, make a trash PS3 game. Uh, Poke. Yeah, Poke is like Tekken. Ubisoft made re oh Ubisoft made reshelled on the PS3, which was significant. Oh, that's right, reshelled was supposed to be uh, a Turtles in Time. Ooh, oh boy, when the when will uh, Babam go baboom? Uh, it should be baboom. Uh, he won't because he still has his fuse. See, he's got his little fuse, and the fuse is not lit, so we're okay. I mean, we could always uh, it could always you know. And end the show that way. That that's what we'll do, Sliner. On the on the final show. The bomb will explode and the show will be over. Uh, <laughs> I know now. In elements now. I'm thinking about Bob from Origami King. Now I'm sad. <clears throat> How do you feel? Uh, I never played the Metal Gear games. I never, I never played the Metal Gear Solid games. I never played any of them. Bob. <laughs> oh, Bobby, we will miss you. Um, okay. I think that is going to wrap it up. Uh, let's get this up. Just remember to not look at the explosion. Oh. Oh. Thank you, everybody, for stopping in and for, for hanging out and having some of these conversations. Uh, we had a, in my opinion, we had a fantastic day today. I, I hope you all did, too. Uh, thank you so much for stopping in and being part of the conversation. Otherwise, it's just me talking at my camera for two hours. And quite frankly, I could probably do that, but it would get really lonely after a while. So I appreciate that. If you're watching right now and you have not done so yet, please go ahead and click follow. Uh, uh, that would very much uh, help us out here. And if you have a Twitch Prime sub or you have a, a $5 that you don't need or $4 that you don't need, uh, because they are 20% off right now. So it's only $4 to subscribe. Uh, so if you are inclined to do so, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also, check the links down below. Uh, follow us over on... Whoa, Sliner! Uh, it, 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 in the hunt for someone else's two subs, uh, two uh, gift subs. Thank you so, so much. Good King Linky and Iron Jimmy. Uh, please go ahead and thank Sliner for his very generous, uh, or, or her, uh, for their, their very generous donation. My apologies for that. <laughs> Um, but if you're also inclined to do so, uh, follow us over on, none of my links are working. Follow us over on YouTube, which is where I try to remember to upload these shows, which now, as of today, I'm going to have four episodes of the show to upload, and I have not done so because I am a lazy ass. Oh, it worked. There we go. Thank you. Uh, and follow us over on Discord. Uh, Discord is where we, uh, a lot of cool people have a lot of cool conversations. That would be, uh, very much appreciated there. And follow us over on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is where I update 
update everybody on what is going to be on the show. And, you know, I post a lot of fun, silly things. So we have a good time there. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, we, that means, that means first of all, I remembered to uh, upload these to YouTube. So uh, uh, I would appreciate a little applause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you are watching this on YouTube, also check the links down below and follow us over on Twitter, Discord, and follow us over on Twitch, where we stream this show uh, Monday. We stream the show Friday, uh, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. We also stream Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Those are gameplay shows, including Thursday, which is a community day show. If you want to hang out and play some games with us, that's the best way to do it. But thank you, everybody. Uh, you have my buttons ready here. Have a good one, everybody. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other because this is, we are in crazy unprecedented times. And right now, more than ever, we need not only to maintain our own sanity, but we need to look out for each other. We need to look out for our our, our neighbors and our family and our brothers and sisters and everybody else because uh, we are uh, as, as, as isolated as we feel, as isolated as we might feel, as separated as we actually are th because of things like, uh, uh, global positioning and whatnot. The reality is we are all one human race and we need to do everything we can to raise each other up because uh, unfortunately our, our human race has spent way too long tearing ourselves down and the reality is none of us get to move forward if all we do is weigh each other down. So uh, please look out for yourselves, look out for each other, take care, and I will see you all next time.